What's going on you guys? Thank you for coming back. We're going to continue the next part in our The Council series. Hope you guys enjoy. Don't forget to hit that subscribe and like button. Thank you so much. Let's go. Louis! At last, there you are. Mother, wait, I... Come, we have to be quick. No, wait, Mother, I... Time is running out, Louis. First, we must... No! That's enough. I won't go a step further unless you explain to me what is going on here. I'm begging you. Talk to me. You must trust me, my son. You are not ready yet. You are the one who should trust me. Tell me what's happening. You would never believe me. I came all the way here for you. Now I found you. I'm ready, Mother. If only, Louis... I have always taught you to keep your mind open and rational. I know you are going to find this hard to believe, but what I am going to reveal to you is entirely true. Many years ago, I found out that demons really do live among us. I beg your pardon? And that they can influence our thoughts. Mother, listen to yourself. I know you're exhausted, but for crying out loud, listen to what you're saying. Demons? <laughs> what next? An ancient monster with a head like an octopus? What do your demons look like? Have they had horns and a pointed tail? No, these are not creatures with billy goat's legs. Forget your Christian folklore. Imagine them more as parasitic spirits. They possess their hosts and direct them from inside. Parasitic spirits? Yes, they are capable of going from one body to another as they see fit. And two of them are present on this island. Right, so let me guess. Lord Mortimer and Sir Gregory, right? You felt it too? No, even if home does look the part. But I don't know who else could do it, given that we're on their territory. Many years ago, well before you were born, I crossed paths with one of them. Since then, I've spent my life trying to find it again. When we recovered the Alizif, I was persuaded that Von Burchard was working for this demon in one way or another. But I thought he would hand the book to a middleman during this conference. That's where I made an error, an error that could well turn out to be fatal. The one who Burchard was meant to give the book to was none other than the demon in person Mortimer. Not to mention that Holm had sent Volner to get it for him. Holm and Mortimer are demons? They both seem to disagree about many things, but I'll admit I never knew exactly why. There are many of them, Louis. Not just those two. Mother, have you any proof to support any of this? Of course, but you do too. You had everything laid out in front of you. Didn't you notice anything? I went beyond the Nightmare Mother. You understood the Masonic date. 1191. Of course! It was during that siege that the demon took possession of Sir Mortimer. They spent a whole night in conversation until the early hours of the morning. Mortimer had passed the test. He had charmed the demon, and so it chose him to be its host for centuries to come. But tell me... Did you find his secret study? I did indeed. Did you see his maps of the world? He has contacts the world over. Yes, I've been developing the Golden Order across the world for many years, and I've never seen anyone with such influence. It's simply inhuman. Well, those property deeds across the world, all signed by the same hand in over several centuries. I am proud of you, Louis. I found your notes, written in lemon juice. Where all eyes size you up. At one stage, I was so afraid of losing my mind that I noted everything down. Congratulations, Louis. Wait, please tell me you didn't open Pandora's box. The urn? Yes, I did. Why? Too bad. We'll deal with it later. I must admit, 
I found it difficult to understand how and why Mortimer didn't have a place in history. On the continent, Mortimer and Holm are mere dandies who organize society balls. History forgets them with a disconcerting facility. No one speaks about them, and yet they whisper in the ears of kings and presidents. You mean the conference? How can you explain that someone manages to bring together so many important figures without anyone knowing? And without any security or personnel. Louis, I am proud of you. You came all this way, you found me, you have surpassed me. You taught me everything I know. Right. How did it all begin? I saw him! What, what do you mean, you saw him? I was 20 years old. I was young and carefree. I traveled the world in search of adventure. In the Persian Gulf, we came across an ancient grimoire that became unlocked. Composed of seven parts, each one was a book in itself, set in a sort of metal armor that structured the whole thing. When all the volumes were brought together, they formed a single book. On my return to Paris, I set to studying these pages. I spent all my days and nights studying them. Oh, I can imagine you doing that. But the writing was in a language I had never seen before. Developed well before Sumerian, in my opinion. So I got the idea to form a small occult circle composed of all the major names in the occult world to see if anyone else could crack it. And you found no one. And I found someone, Louis. I found him, or rather he found me. He was young, charismatic, he was flamboyant. You mean Mortimer? He was a veritable mine of knowledge. I showed him the book, and he was able to decipher a few passages. We spent several months together studying the pages. He helped me understand certain passages, until I realized that he only translated a few parts for me. But I had aroused his interest. It was too late. How so? I mean to say he manipulated me. He used me, and in the end, he stole the book with all its secrets. Did he ever go to your place? Not once. At least, I don't think so. But before disappearing, he proposed a pact between us. He proposed that I follow him and let him teach me, allow him to bring me up. And you accepted. Please don't be stupid. You don't make deals with the devil. After that, I spent my whole life looking for him. Three years later, in Berlin, I just missed him. In London, I lost six members of the order in a chase. In 1741, in Tunisia, I found a sect of fanatics who had crossed paths with him once. 1741, in Poland. 1749, in India. Eight years ago, in Venice. We agreed never to speak about what happened in Venice, Louis. You agreed, and that was before you spoke to me about demons. Wait, the baby we delivered, you and me, that night in Venice, did he have anything to do with Lord Mortimer? The child was his son. We stole his son? Are you insane? I always thought we took him to save him. That was the case. It was precisely to save him from his father. Need I remind you the mother died during childbirth? What became of the child? Later! For the moment, that is not the key issue here. Once we found the Alizif in Paris, I followed Von Borchert's trail here. I didn't think it would lead me straight to the demon. It was careless of me. He toyed with me for a few days, until I caught on, until I saw him as he was. But he had no intention of letting me leave. We are all his pawns, Louis, and if we don't want to spend the rest of our lives turning round in circles here, we must absolutely get off this island. All right, can we move on? Wait a minute, one last thing. I want to know what happened with Elizabeth Adams. Louis, we haven't time for those details. I'm sorry, Mother, but I want to know. She was one of the receptacles for these monsters. I met her parents when she was born. One of the demons got inside her. 
The demon used her to spy on her father, John Adams. He is one of the founding fathers and vice president of the United States, you know. Mortimer possessed her? No, I don't think it was Mortimer. Her father, John Adams, hired me to tend to her, but the evil in her was too deep. In spite of the various treatments I tried on her, I never succeeded in getting it out of her. It's not something I'm proud of, Louis, but I had to try everything. This is crazy. Mother, did you kill her? Of course not. Don't be stupid. I had no interest in getting rid of her. I want to know what happened between you and Emily's sister. Great responsibility often brings difficult choices, Louis. That's all you need to know. All right, but you're not getting away with it so lightly. Once we get back to Paris, be sure I won't be letting it go. We'll see in Paris then. What was going on with the cannons in Tuscany? It was nothing. Since when does the order finance wars? The cannons for that Bonaparte fellow? Listen, once in the lion's den, I did whatever I could to appear legitimate. So yes, I pretended to be interested in Mortimer's project about a young military man who was seeking funding for a foundry in Tuscany. Between you and me, if buying China would have enabled me to escape, I would have signed without hesitation. What did you negotiate about the Alazif with Volner? Absolutely nothing. I managed to pull the wool over his eyes until I found a way to flee. Samuel Ritter du Chois, you wanted to send me a letter about Godoy. I wanted you to run a check on Duke Manuel, but frankly it doesn't really matter anymore now. Godoy is just a pawn like the others. He is not the one I was looking for. On the evening of my arrival, Cardinal Piaggi came looking for you. He was determined to give you a letter. More of his lists. Louis, I think I know what's in that letter, and I beseech you to believe that it is the least of our worries. We can sort that out later. Are you going to tell me what happened to your hand? Better than that, I shall show you. Good. I think that's about right. We shall speak about it once we get back to France. Great actions for humanity have been decided by demons for centuries, Louis. They are playing with our destiny. We are their slaves. And it's time for it to stop. By the way, what was Mortimer's project at this conference? He demands that the Spanish hand over Louisiana to France. Oh, knowing him, it won't stop there. We should do our utmost to put a stop to Mortimer's plans. But for the time being, there are more pressing matters. Are we not going to talk about that dead servant? Are you going to tell me why we're here? There. That's why we are here. This is Bethesda. I think company. Reassure me, we aren't going to have to force that one, are we? I don't think we're even capable of doing it. You're going to have to find a way to open it. Why, of course. And what's inside? Something to vanquish them with? Perfect. So, how does it open? We'll need several keys. I found a note from the architect who conceived the mechanism in Mortimer's secret study. We have to first gather five objects before we try anything. Are the five objects the keys? Exactly. We have the Clement III cross, 
the nails, the Gutenberg Bible, the exegesis of Judas, an armillary sphere, and all we need to match up the dates between the different calendars. Some nails? The nails Don't ask the me. I'm not the one who made the mechanism, the, uh, you know. Big painting. When I arrived, there were already a few of them inserted, so I didn't have to worry about those. On the other hand, I remember seeing some in Mortimer's secret study, behind his nightmare. In a golden cup? Yes. Yes, I saw them too. Perfect. It will be easy for you to find them then. You need three of them. Very well. You remember what to do about the rollers. 1191 to enter. And 6466 to exit. Of course. Why a cross? Well, I haven't the foggiest idea. But it just so happens that's what you are going to use to activate the mechanism. I found the one Mortimer kept. It belonged to Cardinal Guibert, better known by the name of Pope Clement III. Perfect. Where is it? Unfortunately, I've lost it. When I lost my hand, I went dashing out, and it must have fallen from my pocket. Remember, Mother. I I'm certain you can remember. Let me think. You were running? I was bleeding to death. You remember the pain? I thought I was going to faint. Yes, I remember! I don't think it can be far, can it? Would you have lost it outside? No, I don't think so. It must be in the area. I don't remember going up with it. Perfect. I'll search the crypt before leaving. Exegesis. Anything else? Hmm. You... Did you manage to vanquish the Medusa? To open the chimney? Yes, absolutely. So you've already come across it. It's the Bible of Judas that is exposed in the secret room, behind the chimney. Why do they call it an exegesis? Because that's what it is, and not an apocryphal Bible, strictly speaking. It's the study of a text, with a summary, not an actual Bible. Anyway, well done for the Gorgon. You did well. You didn't get tricked by the light bouncing back. Thanks. Do you think I can take it safely? We haven't got a choice, Louis. Without it, we won't be able to work out this cursed mechanism. One last thing before you go. Be very careful. If you come across anyone, they can all potentially be spies of Mortimer or Holm. Don't ever confide in anyone because a demon can slip inside them at any moment. Wait, not all of them though. Take Washington. Especially Washington. He's been conditioned by Mortimer for years. Look at them for crying out loud. How do you explain their behavior otherwise? The most influential politicians in the Western world gather together without the least protection, without a single aid to assist them, to participate in a conference during which the guests start dropping like flies. Me, Adams, Peru, Hillsborough. Look at the number of calamities that have happened over the past few days. And not one of them has asked to leave the island? Do you find that normal? You'll see. Go up to the manor to look for the keys, and I wager not one of them will speak to you about my being in Emily's room. Do you think so? Go on, you'll see. And come back with all the objects in one go. Time is against us. And remember, the code to get out of the secret office is 6466. That's the thing, I don't even know where all they are. I don't know what I'm looking for. Wow. You ought to go, Louis. If someone finds us here, the situation go, might Louis. well become seriously complicated. She never did tell us how she lost her hand. Byzant from the Byzantine Empire, a coin often used during the St. Louis era.
Mm -hmm. Alright, so we're going to start. We're going back to Lord Mortimer's office and grabbing uh, the nails. And then we'll just play it by ear and see where things go. I have no idea where I'm going for all of these. I sort of remember where the Bible is. Right. It's definitely an armillary sphere, but I have to find one that I can take with me. Otherwise, I risk drawing too much attention to my comings and goings. Now, right. Let's see if the statues are in place yet. Uh, I don't remember how to do this part. We'll double back. We'll double back to this. We're gonna go do what we do. We know what to do first. Cause we know where the nails are. I know there's something behind the chimney, but I can't quite remember the code for it. Atrus, the Miller brothers. Mother expressly forbade me from reading it. Ah, Louis. Glad you're here. Blasted. He's gonna talk about my mother. Come and see what I've found. There are pieces of paper in the ashes of the chimney. Someone's been burning something here. Incredible. He doesn't seem to want to speak to me about what happened between my mother and the Hillsborough sisters. Show me a little. Look, it's possible to distinguish two different writing styles. Hmm. The rest of the correspondence between my mother and Emma. Someone tried to burn an exchange of messages. I'm certain there must be more. Shit. What on earth is he doing? Ah, I see. I know what it's about. Do you know who was doing their communicating in this room? Yes, but... Of course, we must keep it to ourselves, because it is still a sensitive matter. Volner and Elizabeth had an affair. Volner hinted that he'd found a way to remain discreet about it. I admit it is ingenious. Well, I would never have guessed. Delighted to have helped, but I still have to find my mother. Of course. We shall see each other later in that case. <sighs> Wasted enough time. The Bible. Bible's still there.
right. This time, it'll be a lot quicker. If I remember rightly, the code was 1191. There. Those are the nails I was looking for. Get out of here. Six four six six, if I remember correctly. That statue is not positioned correctly. Open sesame. So that's the exegesis of Judas. I hope Mortimer doesn't read it very often, otherwise he's going to notice that someone's stolen it. But that's just too bad. I need it. Right. I've got what I need. Now let's not waste any more time.
send the pony on one about. Duchess Emily Hillsborough. Duke Manuel Godoy. Huh, that's me. President George Washington. An armillary sphere. Perfect. That will save me some time. I only hope that he isn't going to realize it right away. Devil's Thorn. I'll keep it. too shocked. I beg your pardon? About Peru this morning. I asked you if you weren't too shocked by it all. And yourself? Not too shook up? The only thing that matters to me about that stupid man Peru is the disastrous situation in which it puts us for the conference vote. I wonder why Mortimer even allowed him to roam around the manor armed. He was a veritable public danger. Indeed. You don't seem to be too affected. Tell me, I was wondering. I won't keep you any longer. See you later, monsieur. Hmm. Y'all seem kind of suspicious of me when all I've done is try to help people. <laughs> I think the cross is what she said that she accidentally dropped when she lost her hand. So it has to be underground with her. I just think I missed it when I went through the first time. So look, the body's not even here. What happened to it? And we're just not even talking about it. What? What did you do? Get up and walk away with this broke neck? Famous cross of Clément the Third. A Chinese coin. Recognizable by the hole in the middle. If I remember rightly, that's called a cache. So, good. You've managed to gather all the keys. Yes, that's right. I have everything. What should I start with? Place the Clement III cross on the console. Then you have to put the nails on the disc of the door. Uh, 
All right, my turn now. Go ahead, impress me. I'll shut up and let you concentrate. What do nails have to do with the door? I don't even see where you could insert them. Uh, where do I put this? Is it anywhere? It didn't say anything about where to put them. The fresco clearly shows the birth of Christ. Louis, I can assure you that that is not the solution to this enigma. This fresco's only purpose is to mislead. I know that now. Please, focus on another theme about Christ. We'll have to trust her. Yes, it's definitely a representation of the birth of Christ, but some of the details have flaked away. I can't see any other clues. One thing is for sure, this enigma deals with the life of Jesus, like my mother said. YouTube, right? It works. Well done, Louis. I hadn't seen those other wheels. Try connecting the theme to see if it goes all the way. I can feel the lever at the bottom. Good luck. <laughs> 